Hello everybody and welcome to the Ignis Petrology series lesson 2. So in this lesson I'm going to be talking about element compatibility and partition coefficients. Let's get straight into it. So geochemistry is the study of the composition of earth. The field encompasses the study of how elements behave during geological processes such as mantle melting or fractional crystallization. The behaviour of these elements is then governed by their physical and chemical properties, like we looked at in lesson one, but also their concentrations and any intensive parameters, such as temperature or pressure, and we'll discuss what that means in the next lesson. Elements combine in a lattice to form a mineral, and minerals then accumulate to form a rock. So the composition of any given melt that crystallises to form a rock exerts a critical control on what that type of rock will be. The distribution of elements is then controlled in part by its partition coefficient and thus its compatibility within a given phase. So let's take a look. So that looks like a particularly daunting diagram, but we'll break it down. A partition or sometimes distribution coefficient essentially represents the concentration of an element in the solid phase over the concentration of that same element in a coexisting liquid phase, which is sometimes denoted as KD or D. So in this diagram, along the x-axis, we have F, or melt fraction, which essentially means 100% solid at this end and 100% liquid at this end, and anything in between represents a mixture of solids and liquids. So partition coefficients is essentially telling us the amount of any element which is hosted in that solid component and the amount of it hosted in that liquid component. Okay. So then up the y-axis, we have concentration in the liquid over concentration in the solid. So, for example, an incompatible element is an element that has a partition coefficient below 1. Okay, so in this case it is 0.001 or 0.1. Now these elements are stubborn and they do not want to partition into the solid when it is present. So that means these types of elements become concentrated in the very last drop of liquid remaining because they really don't want to go into that solid. In contrast, compatible elements are elements that have a partition coefficient above 1. So 2 and then even higher at 10. So these are essentially elements that are super keen for the solids. So the seconds the solid appears in a cooling magma, they want to partition into those solid, which then slowly depletes them in the liquid. Okay, so what about a multi-component system? So in the partition coefficient, we looked at the behavior of an element between one, one solid phase and one liquid phase. But in a cooling magma, for example, we may have many different minerals being super saturated, so many different minerals crystallizing. In addition to minerals, we may have things like immiscible fluids or immiscible sulfide, which may also affect the distribution of elements in a system. We can calculate the behavior of a given element in a multi-component system using the bulk distribution coefficient. The bulk distribution coefficient is in essence, the sum of the partition coefficients in the system to try and quantify the overall behavior of a given element. And if we break it down, D represents our bulk distribution coefficient. Sigma denotes the sum of the partition coefficients, essentially. X represents the weight percent of mineral I. And then KD represents the partition coefficient of a given element in mineral I. So what we're doing is we're multiplying the amount of mineral by the partition coefficient of an element into that mineral. So for example, say we use another element and it's partitioning into pyroxene, okay? We will then multiply the partition coefficient of that element for pyroxene by the weight percent of pyroxene in the system. Now that is applied to all the components in the system. So it means we must have knowledge of the weight percent of the mineral and its partition coefficient to calculate bulk distribution coefficients. Now there are some exceptions to the rule and Henry's law is one of them, okay? So Henry's law in chemistry is the amount of dissolved gas in a liquid is proportional to its partial pressure above the liquid. In essence, in geochemistry, an element obeys Henry's law when its partition coefficient is independent of its concentration. So for example, say you have an element with a partition coefficient of 10 for olivine, it doesn't matter if you have 1000 ppm of that element or 1 ppm the partition coefficient between the two phases is going to be the same. However, an element disobeys Henry's law, so exhibits non-Henrian behaviour, when its partition coefficient is dependent on its concentration. And this typically occurs where that particular element 
is at high concentrations. So a recent example that displays non-Henrian behavior is that of LaRue's 2015 publication given across the bottom, which shows that copper partitioning into clinoperoxine is higher at higher copper concentrations in the clinoperoxine. So therefore, Henry's law and non-Henrian behavior is something to consider when carrying out um, experiments or numerical modeling. So that brings us finally on to element compatibility. So in geological systems, element compatibility characterizes elements based on their behavior during geological processes, and it represents how a trace element will substitute for a major element in a mineral. So for example, a trace element can substitute for a major element when its ionic radius and valence state, so the properties of that element, are similar to that of a major element. A nice example is europium 2 plus is similar in size and stature to calcium 2 plus. Now calcium 2 plus is a major constituent in the plagioclase feldspar crystal lattice. So during crystallization of plagioclase, some of that calcium may be substituted for by europium. Another example is nickel into olivine. So nickel 2 plus has similar properties to magnesium 2 plus, And sometimes these elements are substituted for one another in the crystal lattice of an olivine. So therefore, an incompatible element generally refers to an element with a partition coefficient below 1. During melting, this element will be the first to partition into the melt phase, whereas during crystallization, it will be the last to partition into a solid phase. A compatible element refers to an element with a partition coefficient over 1. Higher amounts of melting are required to liberate these elements from a solid phase because it really wants to be in that solid phase. And during crystallization, these elements are some of the first to partition into a solid phase because it does not want to stay in liquid. So this behavior generally means that the crust is relatively enriched in incompatible elements relative to the mantle and vice versa for compatible elements, purely because it is more difficult to melt and then bring to the crust those compatible elements than it is for the incompatible elements, right? So if you found this helpful, um, please stay in the loop by clicking subscribe. If you have any comments or queries, please drop them in the comment box below. Thank you.